boy. Seems like forever since the four of us have been out to eat, you know? Just the guys. Oh, God, yes, we get it. You have a girlfriend now. A little jealous, are we? No, I'm not jealous. <laughs> All right, I'd kill a hobo if it would get me laid. Now, can we order? General So's chicken is no longer listed under specialties. It's now under chicken. Did the chef lose confidence in the dish or himself? And look over here, shrimp in mobster sauce. What is mobster sauce? It's obviously a typo. Perhaps. Or perhaps this restaurant's now a front for organized crime. And for all we know, the mobster sauce contains actual chunks of deceased mobsters. You know what, let's just get a pizza. Good idea, we'll go to Corleone's. Sure, no mobsters there. The TV is gone. So are our laptops. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God! It's all right. They didn't take my comic books. They took our TV, two laptops, four external hard drives, our PS2, our PS3, our Xbox, our Xbox 360, our classic Nintendo, our Super Nintendo, our Nintendo 64, and our Wii. When does the CSI team get here? In anticipation of their arrival, I've bagged some evidence. Yet one of the thieves had the audacity to quench his thirst while ransacking our home. You should be able to pull some good prints off this. And now, here are my prints so you can rule me out as a suspect. What about me? But I'm sorry, Leonard. It's too early to discount the possibility of this being an inside job. Would I be completely out of line to ask you to shoot him? I'd be happy to put him under a 72-hour psychiatric hold. I do not have to urinate. <laughs> I am the master of my own bladder. <laughs> Drat. I can't believe it. If I hadn't been working the dinner shift, I would have run right into the robbers. Hey, there's no reason for you to be scared. I'm not scared. I would have gone all Nebraska on their asses. Uh, may I come in? Sheldon, do you want to sleep here tonight? Oh, as small as Leonard is, I don't think the two of you would be comfortable on the couch. <laughs> All right, we've got a titanium deadbolt and a reinforced jam controlled by a state-of-the-art electronic access system. What if somebody kidnaps me, forces me to record my voice, and then cuts off my thumb? I'll send them a basket of muffins. <laughs> Inside, we've got motion detectors, infrared sensors, and cameras running state-of-the-art facial recognition software. Oh, where did you get all this stuff? <laughs> I got a buddy over at the Department of Defense. He just gave it to you? Sure he would have if I'd asked. <laughs> Ironically, their security isn't all that good. Josh, your car is blocking me. Yes. Yes. The net's gonna be electrified. You picture her on the floor spasming uncontrollably. Better. <laughs> I lie here awake, tormented, while out there evil lurks. <laughs> I am the master of my own bladder. <laughs> the hell are you doing out there? I heard a noise. It was us. We knocked over a lamp. Why would you knock over a lamp? We were gonna. He have... doesn't need to know what we were doing, Leonard. Oh! Sorry about that. Uh, what can you do? <laughs> Looks like Wallowitz got the net electrified. Sheldon, are you okay? I, I'm fine. I'm no longer the master of my own bladder. Windows 7 is much more user-friendly than Windows Vista. <laughs> I don't like that. Don't you think looking for a new city to live in is a bit of an overreaction? Enid, Oklahoma. <laughs> Low crime rate and high-speed internet connectivity, but no model train shops. <laughs> Sorry, Enid. Is he quitting his job at the university? No, oh, no, he's gonna telecommute. Everybody's really excited about it. <laughs> but Penny, you're from Nebraska, correct? Born and raised. <laughs> 
come on. So you were the victim of a crime. That's part of life. He, when my great-grandfather first came to this country, he put all his hopes and dreams into this little butcher shop he ran on the Lower East Side of New York. You know what happened? Every customer who walked into that butcher shop and asked for a pound of liver got ripped off. <laughs> I'm gonna miss you. Please, Penny. As you know, I'm not comfortable with prolonged goodbyes and maudlin displays of emotion, so I prepared a short video. The four of you are three of my closest friends and one treasured acquaintance. <laughs> Though I cannot state categorically that my life will be diminished by not having you in it, I am comfortable if you choose to believe that. <laughs> Since you intend to remain in this lawless metropolitan area, statistics suggest that you will succumb to tragic and gruesome ends before we meet again. Live long and prosper. Hey, look who's back! Interesting. The acquaintance is the first to greet me. What you doing? I'm attempting to view my work as a fleeting peripheral image so as to engage the superior colliculus of my brain. Interesting. I usually just have coffee. Penny, I told you, if you don't put him in his crate at night, he just runs around the apartment. Maybe you need a fresh start. You're right. Electrons move through graphene, act as if they have no mass. <laughs> How long has he been stuck? Mm, intellectually, about 30 hours. Emotionally, about 29 years. <laughs> have you tried rebooting him? Hey, it's disco night at the Moonlight Roller Rink in Glendale tonight. Who's up for getting down? Oh, that's perfect. Bernadette's been hawking me to take her roller skating. Mm, I think Penny likes to skate. The four of us could double. What could be better? We're in. I'm happy just to guide you and your ladies to suitable entertainment choices. I'm a walking brown yelp.com. Oh my god, have you ever been so embarrassed? Not recently. I don't know which was lamer, their roller skating or their disco dancing. For me, the worst part was when people saw us leave with them. Hey, did you notice all the people looking at us? <laughs> Not really, I was in my boogie zone. <laughs> Sorry, I'm moving a little slow. I think I bruised my coccyx. Oh, poor baby. Hey, show that. Ah! Oh, God, are you good? Oh, damn. Are you okay? Do I look okay? Don't bark at me. I fell, too. No, you've been falling all night. You're used to it. <laughs> Sheldon, when was the last time you got any sleep? I don't know. Two, three days. Not important. I don't need sleep. I need answers. What happens to our neuroreceptors when we don't get enough REM sleep? They lose their sensitivity to serotonin and norepinephrine. Which leads to... Impaired cognitive function. That was amazing how you handled him. I know how to deal with stubborn children. My mother used to run an illegal daycare center in our basement. Yeah, all right, I'll be right there. What happened? Sheldon's escaped and is terrorizing the village. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dr. Hostetter. Where is he? Ball pit. Thanks for not calling the cops. Oh, hey, it's no big deal. My sister's got a kid who's special. <laughs> Yeah, well, he's extra special. So we need to go home now. You'll never catch me. <laughs> come here! Bazinga. 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 Leonard and Penny. I have good news. And you had to barge in here and wake us up in the middle of the night? Your cell phone was off. Because we didn't want to be disturbed. And that didn't work out, did it? Okay, you know what, Leonard? I know I said I could handle your roommate, but I was wrong. We're going to have to break up. When Albert Einstein came up with special relativity, he was working at the patent office. I'm going to find a similarly menial job where my basal ganglia are occupied with a routine task, freeing my prefrontal cortex to work quietly in the background on my problem. Sounds like a great plan. Of course it is. Even talking to you is sufficiently menial that I can feel the proverbial juices starting to flow. Oh, by the way, I was watching you sleep for a moment, and I noticed that your snoring seems to be worse when you're on your back. No, Leonard doesn't snore. No, I wasn't talking to Leonard. You're looking for a job. 
a menial job. <laughs> like yours. Mr. Cooper, let me just ask you a question. What was your last job? Senior theoretical particle physicist at Caltech focusing on M theory, or in layman's terms, string theory. I see. Just give me a second. <laughs> What are you doing here? A reasonable question. I ask myself, what is the most mind-numbing pedestrian job conceivable? And three answers came to mind. A toll booth attendant, an Apple store genius, <laughs> and what Penny does. And for you, factory burrito grande. No cheese, no sour cream, no ugly consequences from your lactose intolerance. Hey, guys, sorry you had to wait, but we are swamped. What's this? Uh, Sheldon took our order. Sheldon doesn't work here. Well, uh, honey, not to complain, but we were starting to think you didn't either. The interference pattern in the fracture. The motion of the wave to the molecular structure. I've been looking at it all wrong. Sheldon, where are you going? Aren't you going to clean this up? Well, I'm sorry, I don't work here. <laughs> Happy now? I'm on a cloud.